Well, friends, it looks like we dodged a bullet, literally, in Colorado. Colorado authorities arrested a 19-year-old suspect for allegedly planning to shoot up multiple schools in Colorado Springs. The 18th Judicial District Attorney's Office on Thursday said the defendant, William Whitworth, who identified incorrectly, I might add, as Lily, and according to a DA spokesman, was in the process of transitioning to a female, which is not possible. Whitworth is charged with two counts of first-degree criminal attempt to commit murder, criminal mischief, menacing, and interference with staff, faculty, or students of educational institutions. Deputies had responded to a disturbance call according to an affidavit. A family member reportedly told 911 dispatchers that her sister, quote unquote, had threatened to shoot up a school and had anger problems. When the deputies went to the house, they were directed to a room where Whitworth was sleeping. They say the room was filled with trash as high as the bed and there were holes in the wall, anger issues. During questioning, Whitworth admitted to planning a school shooting with the suspect's former middle school, Timberview, being a main target. Rest papers say deputies found a drawn layout of the school and a manifesto filled with schizophrenic rants, which this is typical of a transgender, and mentions of serial killers, politicians, entertainers, including the Columbine shooters and former President Donald Trump. Now, during questioning, deputies asked the kind of chunky guy, what his main targets were, and he did say the middle school, but he also mentioned churches were part of his uh, target, if you will. The deputy later asked how much knowledge Whitworth had about school shootings, and to which Whitworth replied, too much. The affidavit refers to a manifesto with an entire page referencing mass killings. The document allegedly includes drawings of classrooms and a detonator. According to the deputy, suspect claimed to have found a YouTube video on how to create a detonator. The deputies also found journals with details of a list of firearms and how to 3D print them. Friends, this is not a coincidence that we're seeing a lot of this in the news. You know, when we see in the summertime, we'll see a couple of shark attacks and then the media gets to where they get a little giddy about shark attacks and they'll report on any kind of shark attack. So in many cases, the shark attacks are the same all summer, every summer. It's just that once you start hearing about them, they start putting them more in the media so you feel like there's a rash of them when it's really no different than the history or past. This is different. This is a rash of trans threats, murders, or carrying out or threatening either way. Some of this has happened before, but it's been covered up because the news media has never wanted you to know about this. Now they can't hide this. Now it's in the open. Now we see it. We see it for what it is. It is a group of mentally deficient patients who should be patients, and they're not. Some cases they may be treated with SSRIs, psychotropic drugs, and unfortunately that's just going to make things worse. When you have a black box warning on a psychotropic drug, the FDA mandates that psychotropic drug to have that black box warning because it's got things associated with it that can make some mental conditions worse. Does it help some people? Of course it does. Does it hurt a lot of people? I think it hurts more people than it helps, actually. And some of these things are ideations of mania, suicidal, uh, homicidal. It's things that it can cause in the brain. And then you also can't stop cold turkey either because... This stuff gets into your body and you don't just stop doing it and all the symptoms go away. In some cases, you can actually worsen your symptoms by just stopping these drugs cold turkey. These are drugs that go into your body and affect dopamine, serotonin, different type of uptake in the brain of various chemicals. And they help you make good decisions, bad decisions, uh, abnormal decisions, rash decisions, or they prevent those things. And in a lot of cases, you're taking a drug for a particular symptom like these trans people are. And in some cases, it's going to do just the opposite and make that same symptom you're trying to treat twice as bad. So it's not a one-size-fits-all when you take these drugs. And I think parents need to understand that also whenever they're allowing these doctors to just openly prescribe these drugs to your kids. You have to ask these questions. Ask the difficult questions to these doctors. Because while I don't sympathize with any of these trans wackos that are trying to force things down our, our throats, and especially the ones who are killing our children, I do feel bad for a large subset of them because they're crying out in so many different ways for help. Nobody's giving it to them because from the federal government down to the media, we have trivialized this. We've made this a normal thing. This is a normal thing now to pretend that you're something that we all know that you are not. You cannot be something that you pretend you are if you are not that thing. And 
everyone is trying to create a new voting class of people that they can hail as their own voter base. And they're losing sight of the fact that we are allowing this to, to, get, to get worse. This is not getting any better. By normalizing a mentally ill patient, all you're doing is telling them it's okay to refuse treatment. And all you're doing is putting them into a box that they already don't feel comfortable being in, but now suddenly you're telling them it's okay. In their mind, they're thinking, I know something's wrong with me. But by you telling them how normal that is, you're confusing them even more because now they're thinking, well, they're saying I'm okay. Is there really something wrong with me? Guys, I did two years of research when I wrote my book, How to Make a Monster. Two years of research. There's a book on mental disorders. Those of you in psychology, uh, psychiatry, will know what the DSM book is. The DSM is a Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. This book contains all of the mental disorders known to affect a patient in whatever way. It also talks about treatment, talks about signs, different ways to identify what it is. But make no mistake, this is about mental disorders. On page 451, you're going to find everything you need to know about gender dysphoria. That's what we're dealing with. We are dealing with a mental disorder that can be clinically treated in various ways. And I don't mean just medication. I mean different types of uh, therapy and whatnot. There are ways to try to help these people. Let me be very clear. And I know I joke a lot about this because I have a lot of disdain for people who refuse help when they know something is wrong with them because they think politically and socially they're making a statement like some of these nut jobs are out there right now. The Bud Light thing is a perfect example. That is a mental patient right there. That is a clear-cut mental patient. That person will do themselves physical harm at some point if somebody doesn't try to seek that boy help. Because society is failing these people as far as accepting them. You can accept a person that has a problem like let's say severe depression. A person who has severe depression has a problem. They need help. We can accept them as a patient who has severe depression without belittling them and making them feel alone. We can accept them, but at the same time, ask and help them to get the help they need. Nobody's doing that with these mental patients who are trans. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Please don't